Hello and welcome to another tutorial on this animation. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to Derivative and our Patreons for supporting us. Before we start, does it frustrate you searching through endless nodes until you find the audio device out and bypass it? Do you find yourself wishing there would be a single button right in the toolbar to get rid of all this trouble? Our friend from Function Store has the solution for us. He has created a component you can just drag and drop into one of your files and this will automatically and permanently expand your Touch Designer toolbar with a volume slider and a global mute option for the audio. Now, it doesn't matter the number of audio device out chops, you can lower, increase, mute or unmute the volume without having to frantically search for the right chops. So head on over and subscribe to his YouTube channel to find out how you can do this and other ways to customize and expand the toolbar. Links to his YouTube channel and his Patreon will be down in the description box. Great, now on to our tutorial. We'll learn how we can create some audio reactive textures and how we can apply these textures to 3D objects. So we're going to create a basic rendering network first. Let's start with a torus sop. Let's right click at the output of the torus and create a texture sop. Then let's right click at the output of the texture sop and attach a geometry. Let's repeat the same process, but instead of a torus, let's create a sphere in the beginning. Great, now for the rendering, let's press tab and create a camera comp. Press tab again and create a render top. From here, let's split the screen into two and set the second screen to top viewer. Create a null at the end of the network and turn on the display flag. Right click on an empty space in the left screen, go to display and unselect the backdrop tops. To get a black background, let's right click on the connecting line right before the null top and insert an RGB key. Now onto the material, I'm going to press tab and create a constant material. I will be using this for all geometries, but you can choose different materials if you want to. Drag the material and drop it onto both geometries, one after the other, and select parameter material. Ok, now let's open the parameter window of the torus, set the orientation to the z-axis and increase the resolution by setting the number of rows and columns to 200 by 200. Then let's open the parameter window of the sphere sop, let's decrease the radius to around minus 0.3 and to increase the resolution let's go to the detail tab and set the number of rows and columns to 50 by 50. Let's go back to the parameter window of the torus and also decrease the radius. Great, now in the beginning we saw that we had also another geometry surrounding all the shapes that we have until now. We had these little boxes all around the shape. To get to this, let's first create the base shape, which is a box sop. Then we will continue like in the networks above with a texture sop and the geometry comp. Now we want to have multiple of these boxes positioned so that they enclose in a circle. Circle being a keyword here, let's press tab and create a circle sop. Let's open the parameter window and we'll decrease the number of divisions to around 10. We might need to tweak this later based on how many of the shapes we will need for the circle to close. So let's right click at the output of the circle and attach an all sop. Then let's open the parameter window of the Geo3, go to the first instance tab and toggle on the instancing. For clarity, let's rename the null 3 to box pause for position and we'll color this red. Let's click on the Geo3 
and press P to open the parameter window. Here we'll drag and drop the position node to the translate operator of the geo. Set translate X to P0, translate Y to P1 and translate Z to P2. And like so, we have our third geometry. Again, I'm going to reuse the constant material and drag and drop it onto the geo3 and select parameter material. Now that we have the main shape, we can tweak the sizes and the amount. So I'll open the parameter window of the box shop and decrease the scale to around 0.2. And then increase the number of divisions of the circle to 16. Back to the box shop, we can also choose to rotate. I decided to rotate a bit in the Y and a bit in the Z direction. Now in the beginning of the video, we also created this audio chop because we want the textures to react to the music. So the shapes in themselves, they are going to stay still, but the texture of them is going to change according to the sound. And this is why we created all the texture sops. Now to do this, let's press tab and create a rectangle top. Open the parameter window, go to common and set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. Let's go back to the rectangle tab and we're going to transform this into a long thin line by decreasing the X size and at the same time increasing the Y size to around 1.6. We will probably change these values later on again, so don't worry about that now. Then let's right click at the output of the rectangle and create a transform top. In the parameter window, let's go to the tile tab and set the extend parameter to mirror. Back to the transform tab, we can increase the number of these lines if we decrease the scale on both directions. The thickness of the lines we can control in the rectangle parameter window by increasing or decreasing the size on the X direction. From here we will go on to use the rotation parameter on the transform tab, we will have this react to the music and then apply it to the texture. So let's right click after the transform top create an all and rename it to texture. Then let's open the parameter window of the constant material and on the color map we will drag and drop the texture node we just created. This will cause all the shapes to which we have applied the constant material to get this striped look. Great, so now all that's left to do is make this react to the audio. In a previous tutorial, we introduced three custom components you can use to make easy audio reactive visuals. The link to the tutorial will be in the description, as well as the link where you can download this custom component for free. Once you have downloaded it, drag and drop it into our file, connect it after the null chop, and attach another null chop right after. Let's rename this null to rotation and color it yellow. Then let's open the parameter window of the transform, set the rotation null viewer active and drag and drop it to the rotation of the transform. Now, if we unmute, we can obviously notice the textures of our shapes react to the music, which is what we wanted. Now, the reason why the texture looks all the same in all of our shapes is because of two parameters. First, the texture graphic is orthographic in all our geometries and the texture is being projected on the x-axis also on all geometries. So let's change this on the torus up first, simply by changing the texture type to any other type. In this case, I chose the spherical polar one. In cases like this, we might also notice little hiccups in the visuals, like right here. We can easily solve this by attaching another mirror before the texture null down on the top network. 
Once you do this, open the parameter window and increase the rotation to 90 degrees. Then we can repeat the same process and explore the textures on the other shapes as well. So for example, on the sphere shop, I went with the texture type cylindrical and the x-axis as a projection axis. And then again, on the box shop, I went with rows and columns as a texture type. Great, so now in order to render all of this with the audio you choose in the beginning, you can use the custom comp we created for setting up the timeline to the track we insert. You only drag and drop this onto the network, then you drag and drop your chosen track to it and click on Pulse in the parameter window. Here, don't forget to set the play mode on the audio file in to locked to timeline. This comp you can also download for free, link will be below, but if you want more information about this, just head on to this other tutorial we published before. I'm hoping you enjoyed watching and learned something with value. Thank you so much for your support, please like and subscribe to the channel to help us make more of these tutorials, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, have a great time, bye!